Hi guys, it's Pastor Maddie again, and like I said in my previous video, this video is going to be coming shortly on my review of The Forever Song by Julie Kagawa. So you're probably wondering why I am a little bit more dressed up as I am, I am, well, more than I usually am, and that is because I am about to go to a music excursion to a concert. So I'm really excited for that, so I have to get this done as quickly as I can. So, enjoy! So, I finished this a little while ago, a few weeks ago, and I haven't done a review yet, probably because I was wallowing in my grief on the series ending, and not to mention that I started reading other books like Eleanor and Park, and I'm currently reading Dear John. So I'm doing this video because I need to express my feelings uh, on this book, especially with it being the last book of the series, and so I need to express those feelings that I have currently built up inside of me because nobody else has read this book yet of my friends, so I am all alone in this. So the basic storyline is about this girl called Allison who dies and then becomes a vampire and she has to deal with all of this stuff about um, trying to be human and not vampire. She doesn't want to become the monster that she can become when she's a vampire. She doesn't want to be this person that slays all these vampires just because she needs to, because she needs to eat. So she then meets this guy called Zeke who is a human and I guess you can guess what is going to happen. She falls in love and that's pretty much it. I don't want to ruin it anymore and yes. So if you haven't read this series or you haven't especially read this book, I would suggest you leave the door right now, click the pause button, click the X button because there is going to be some big, big spoilers in this. Okay? Just leave now if you haven't seen it or read it. So my worst prediction or nightmare came true. Zeke became a vampire. This I had a feeling it was going to happen. I think everyone knew it was going to happen. But I think we were all holding on to that small thread of hope that Ju Julie Kagawa hadn't written it to be that way. I think we were all hoping that he was somehow still human, still alive, and still the same Zeke we left behind in Eternity Cure. But unfortunately, that was not the case. And he is now a vampire and he had to deal with all the emotions and considering that he has a heart that especially is very very human that is just somebody that would die if they became a vampire which is what he said it just made the whole feeling even worse and I just about had a heart attack at that moment so if you haven't left yet I warned you, I warned you that there was going to be big spoilers. So if you haven't le left yet, leave right now. I am threatening you to leave right now. Go. So I think possibly chapter 6 was the worst chapter for me, as not only do you find out about Zeke being a vampire, but you also find out about him being the, what was it called, the uh, kind of mimic of their master. Um and him being bad, it completely surprised me because I was like, oh yes, he's not, he's going to be a vampire, but it's all good, he's, he's still fine. Psh. Nope. Of course it wouldn't be like that. Julie Kagawa just has to not break your heart because he's a vampire, but break your heart because he's not still in love with Ali, he's still not the same Zeke, he's not on the good side. It just about destroyed me, literally. And then, even when he had broken through his shell of being the bad, mimicky vampire Saren, he was still cold to Ali, which just about destroyed me even more. This book, I'm, to I'm telling you, it, it ruined me. It, as good of a book as it was, I just about died. In every single page, every single sentence, every single word of this book, I just about died. And finally, you see him break through the coldness again, he breaks through his iceberg, and they reconceal, they finally admit their feelings, Ali finally admits, gets to say it, finally gets to say, that he, that she loves him, and then, oh, they do it, 
they do the forbidden curse, the forbidden thing. Oh, oh, I, I mean, we all saw it coming, right? Yeah, we all saw it coming, but wow. I mean, just wow. I don't know even what to say about that. I don't even know why I started talking about it, but I did. So, hey, let's just go with it. Oh, and Kanan. <laughs> I guess this is another thing that we should have seen coming. I guess we should have seen that he was going to die and then the, the cure being inside of him. But, oh my gosh. Kanan was so sweet to Allison. And he was so funny. And, like, when he broke up, uh, Jackal and Allison's fights. Just, just why, Julie? Why? Why? Why do you do this to us? Why do you make us suffer? And and oh, just why? Poor Kanan. I mean, I'm glad he's. I'm glad he's able to rest in peace. But oh, she has to live without him. The ending. Oh. What an ending. That was, I think, a really, really good way to end. It still, it left the optimism at the end that the world was going to be cured of the scratchy disease thing. I forget what it's called right now. But, um, yes, it left optimism. And then it left them together, Zeke and Ali together, which was really, really nice. And Jackal, he, he gets this, he's still alive. So, hey, that's good. That's good, right? And he, he's just sailing off to wherever, and she's sailing off to wherever with Zeke, and ugh, it's just pure perfection. I'm telling you, pure perfection. Great, great ending. Just, I wouldn't have had it any other way. So, I hope this review was better than my previous one on Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and I hope you really enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching. Post your comments down below if you have any, if you want to discuss the book with me. Like the video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or a thumbs down if you didn't which I hope that is not the option that you have in your mind and I hope that you liked it again. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. So that is it for me. I will see you all guys all later and ciao!